Hi, I'm Darren Cox and we're here today at Monk Hall Fishery, which is about 10 or 15 minutes outside of the centre of Bridge North. Great, beautiful place. We're out in the open valley here and it's fantastic. I've just had one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in my life down at the cafe. We've come up to the lake here, which is Hawk Lake. I've never been to this fishery before. I've never seen this lake before and the object of today is to get fishing and try and do a little bit of sneaky practice and understand what this lake's all about. It'll give me a good insight uh, and give you a good insight hopefully of, of how I will approach a lake that I've never seen before. And to me that's a really exciting thing. I love fish, fishing places that I've never been to before. So let's have a go shall we? Well like I've said I've never been to this place but in the immortal words of uh, river monster Jeremy Wade I talked to some locals. That's one of the best things you can actually do in fishing is actually seek guidance from locals. They might not tell you exactly how to fish it, but what they can give you is sort of the basics, how deep the place is, what the methods are, and you get, you, you get an idea. I mean, I've heard, I've been told, this place is full of F1s. It's got some carp in it, quite a lot of carp. Not big carp, and it's got lots and lots of hide in it. So there's a very mixed species. So what I've got to do from my own point of view, despite what I've heard from other people, is try and find out what depth it is. I'll always start off literally just dropping a rig in there. Looks to me like it's shallow. It's very shallow. I've plumbed out where I'm fishing, so my rig is relatively at the depth that I am going to be fishing. So, just to give you an idea, I know now that there's a ledge there. So, I'll go a bit further out, try and find that ledge. It's getting deeper, it's absolutely dropped off. Like, now I didn't know that because I've literally gone out there and, and, and plumbed up out there and it's just I've just been told there that literally it must just go straight down like that so if I go to there and arm's length out that is virtually on the bottom of what I would class the, the, the total shelf so there's a proper distinct ledge there so I would be looking to feed something there today despite what anybody tells me I'll look to feed somewhere along that ledge I might I might do it there so it's out of the way and just concentrate on another stuff. But now, what I'll do is I'll just, just plumb up, just go out. Now, that is the total depth. A little bit deeper there, but only an inch. So a lot of these lakes, they do go up and down a little bit, especially on new lakes, because new lakes are dug out and you've got the excavation. And it does help to plumb about. Now, what Ben has told me on this place is there are some sunken, like what he calls sunken islands, where they put stone bars in. So somewhere like this, it's really important to try and get hold of the locals and get that knowledge off and find out where the bars are. In the cafe, there's a picture of this lake and you can see which, which pegs the bars are in. But it's a big help because especially winter and summer, the fish in winter will hang around those bars because they're a definite feature, but in summer, when you're shallow fishing, it's highly lighter. Those fish will be above those bars. They're not on, not sat on them, but they're actually up, high up in the air around those bars. Just like you see fish in these programs, these nature programs, where they hang around the coral. It's just exactly the same thing. It's where the food is. It's where there's a bit of safety. So keep plumbing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go right out to 14 and a half meters. I don't anticipate to be fishing any further out than that today because I've set a waggler up. I'm gonna fish a waggler past there. It's as flat as you like. An odd inch difference, but it's nice, really is nice. I like the look of that. I'll probably fish about 14 metres looking at that. Far enough away from my waggle line. And I've been told that the top six line will be a good line. So if that's the same depth, then I'm quids in here. It is, look, that's absolutely perfect. And there, what I plan to do there is just just throw a few maggots in, just just put a little bit of bait in. Wind's swirly, but I should be able to feed it all right. If there's plenty of small fish, yeah, that should be good. That should be perfect for it. And then, like I said, what I'll probably do is feed a line there. A little bit shallower there, but. I've got another rig that I can set up just for that, just to make it. So the idea is feed maggots on my top six. 
I'm going to have a pellet line about 14 metres. I'll only cut that in to start with, with a little bit of micros, just see how it goes. And I'm also going to feed a waggler line, just really, really carefully, just two or three bits of corn all the time, because I think that could be a good line today. I often find on, on lakes where there's only one of you on the lake, especially with practicing in winter, you, you, sometimes you think there was no fish in the place because they move away from you but they will come back and that waggle line might just be the best line today as they come back but we'll have a go start on a waggler just ping tiny odd twos threes of corn just to try and get a few fish moving don't want to feed a lot i've turned the water temperatures very cold still had a lot of cold rain and it's been icy for quite some time so I'm not expecting to catch lots of fish straight away. I'd like to think we could catch a few fish eventually. But I overcast. I'm casting out of the way. And then I'm drawing back into where I think the fish will be. And what I've done is I've plumbed up to fish at the bottom of the ledge of the island over there. So that I think it's probably quite a steep ledge looking at it. A couple of grains of corn and hopefully we'll get an odd fish starting to move. Wind's a bit naughty for the pinging the corn, but uh, just got to be patient. And, you know, if, if, it, if your corn's going everywhere, just start flicking it in ones and try to be more accurate. You're going to have plenty of time to do it. So just take your time. And same with on, on the, um, the maggot line as well. I'm, I've, I've just, I've not fed anything on my maggot line other than just a few maggots by hand like that. I just want to try and get a few fish looking for bait on that line. And then on the 14 metre line I've got micros and a tiny little bit of corn. So I've got three lines primed. I've got this other line down here where I've plumbed up, which is a similar depth. It's about four inches difference in depth to the, to the main depth because it's actually just on the ledge. So I've got quite a few options there, four swims. Um, I've got to got one, two, three different depths. So I'm, I'm trying to cover my options there to see where the fish are. And we'll have a go, let's hope we get a few bites. I'm going to try both pole lines very quickly. I want to see if I can get a bite on both pole lines. Whether I catch on one straight away or not, I will still go fairly quickly onto my other line. So I'm only going to give it five minutes on this line if I don't get a bite, and then I'll switch straight away. Um, the rig's rig, again, is um, it's a fairly straightforward rig. I've started with it's 0.3 flow. I'm fishing about about six foot of water there um got a maggot on the hook feeding half a dozen maggots over my float but i've got a relatively high bulk about um 400 mil from my hook uh, and then just three very small number 11 droppers floats dotted down uh, i've just readjusted it so it dots down perfectly i want to see every tiny indication to let me know even if it's a line or something, I want to see that movement to tell me that some fish in the swim, then I can work out how to catch them. It's um, this this float is it's it's a slim line, but it's a DC 12H, which is a, a, a very fine hollow bristle, um, really easy to see, and, and a carbon stem. I've also got the same float set up, but with a wire stem, so that if if the the wind gets up too much, I can hold hold the rig nicely with the wire stem. So again, it covers my options. Hook-wise and line-wise, got 09 garble line hook length um, to a size 20 um, Guru F1 pellet. So the the rig's fairly light. I can catch anything. The the elastic itself, I'm using now a um, micro elastic, which is the fighter high stretch, the orange, which is 1.2 millimeters. Again, 
perfect for catching win winter silvers, winter F1s, even F1s up to five, six pound. And if I hook a carp, I've only got a nine on anyway. So I'm gonna have to take my time and be sensible with it. So that's just perfectly balanced tackle. It's just the right way to be at this time of year. Just trickling, just trying to trickle a few maggots in all the time. I want these fish to, to, to see the bait. There's a lot of hide in here and then, you know, I fancy catching a few hide first and, and then obviously some F1s. But a bit of lifting and dropping, keeping the bait moving initially, trying to mimic the, the maggots that are falling through the water and hopefully get an indication. It's been quite interesting today on this line because I started off, I put a little tiny pigeon's egg of micros in and the little bit, little bit of corn, literally four or five grains of corn just to kick it off. And I tried pellets on, over it to start with and to no, no good at all. Um, so we saw a few fish topping, we knew there was fish in the area and I, I, like, like I said many times before I felt like it must be me doing something wrong rather than the fish not feeding. So I started fishing corn out there, just gone like a little bit further than the first put my bait out. Just so I, I started on, on the joint there, gone that little bit further and, 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 and just fishing corn and it's definitely made a difference. I tried um, expanded pellets again, not had bites on it, but corn just must be, it's, it's just a little bit heavier, it's sitting nicer, we've got this weird swirly wind, a lot more visible and just with a bit of patience you get a bite of a chuck but you've got to be patient and you've got to make sure that your float's sitting right. Get it settled perfectly you start to see those little indications of the fish around your float and if you don't get a proper bite just a little tiny lift the float out of the water and then lower it in quickly just let it do what it wants to do. And that's when you tend to get the bites, just as it's settling again. Oh, this has got to be my last fish of the day. I want to stop, but I've got to go. <laughs> uh, it's been freezing cold, my eyes are watering. But after a bit of hard work this morning, we've had a lovely day's fishing. Really, I've had a great day's fishing. I dread to think what this place is like in summer. We must be solid. <laughs> There's fish topping all over the lake now as the light's starting to go. Both sides of the lake, fish topping, F1s and carp. If you fancy a couple of days here, They've got some amazing B&B &B on site as well, so you can come up here, enjoy yourself, winter or summer. A great fishery, I tell you what, get, if you haven't been here, definitely get yourselves up here, because you'll love it. I mean, look at those beauties. Oh. Beautiful F1s, absolutely gorgeous fish. Perfect. And the place is full of them. <laughs>